Hi, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, what I want to talk about is current relationships in a delta connected load. So here I have my delta connected load. Now, what we would see here, okay, um, we have phase A, right, which is located between A and B. So this is phase A. Now for phase A current, we would say, okay, current is going to flow from A to B. We would call this I, A to B. Those would be our little subscripts and we would call that our phase A current. Now phase current for C would be flowing from B to C. So we call that our phase B current. It's I, B to C. Same thing with C. This is phase C here. It's located between C and A. So my phase C current, we would call I, C to A. So those are my phase currents. Now, that's good and that's great. And we would have those phase currents. Now, what we also have here is we have line currents. So my phase currents, I'm going to put these over here. My phase currents would be I A to B, I B to C, and I C to A. Awesome. And those are based off of the phase and my voltage is there. Now, what we have, what I want to talk about here with the main point of this video is, is calculating line currents. So when I'm calculating line currents, I have three currents. I have line A, which we call IA, line B, which we call IB, and line C, which I call IC. So now I want to talk about this for a second. So let's start with A. So as current flows on line A into node A, point A on my phasor diagram, we can apply Kirchhoff's current law, which tells us that all current flowing into a node equals the current flowing out of that node. So if I'm flowing into node A, I've got AB flowing out and I've got a current flowing this way, which I'm not going to color in this arrowhead, but this is I A to C which actually ends up being the inverse of I C to A, right? So I C to A is our regular phase current. I A to C is the inverse of that. So when we get into our phasor diagrams, we're actually going to see it 180 degrees apart or 180 degrees the opposite direction. So I A is I, all right, I A to B plus I, a to C. And that'll be completed, like I said, on a phasor diagram. Then we get over here, this right here would be I B. This one was I A. I B, if we look, comes down, comes into this node. Again, everything coming into this node must come out. So here we'll have another current flowing as well. When the current in line B is at a positive alternation, this one right here we'll call I B to A because it's flowing from B up to A. So it's actually the inverse of A to B. So it's going to be the same value, whatever value we had for A to B, it's going to be the same value only 180 degrees apart. So like I said, that's I B to C plus I B to A. Awesome. Then we come to the C phase, or line C, line C, C line, line three, current I, C. Now again, when that line C is in its positive alternation, this comes down, it goes into there, we end up with adding C to A, which we know already, plus I, C to B, which again is just going to be the 180 degree inverse of B to C. So we get I C to A, which we know, plus I C to B. Again, keep in mind, these three here, these are all the inverse. Or what we call the phantom phasers or phantom current.
currents, okay? So we do those three and that's great. Now, there's a couple rules that come into play because if you're looking at this and you're thinking, wow, that could end up being a whole lot of work ending up solving current in each phase and then doing an HV chart for all three of them. So what I wanna talk about is some special rules. Now this rule works always. This will work in all delta connected loads. If we have a balanced delta connected load and right, a balanced circuit, right? If we have a balanced load, right? And we need to hit two criteria in order to be considered balanced. Each phase needs the same impedance and each phase needs the same power factor. So if you have that, if all of these are resistors of 10 ohms or whatever it is, if they all have the same impedance and the same power factor, then it's a balanced load. And there's two rules that come into play for balanced loads that are crucial. Those are I line, my line current equals I phase times the square root of three. And when we're looking at a phasor diagram, which we're not doing in this video, but you can check out the links below, and I have lots of videos going over delta phasor diagrams. I line will lag I phase on that diagram by 30 degrees. So that's just a quick intro and a intro to the rules that you should know for delta connected loads. Um, thanks again for watching. Check out some other videos below and, and how to actually apply uh, all of these rules and actually calculate some currents depending on your load. Thanks for watching.